What's up guys, Jeff Tavalier, AthleteX.com. So today I'm gonna to perform a dumbbell fly for you, but only because I wanna dig it up out of the iron graveyard so I can rebury it and throw one more pile of dirt on top of it. But I wanna show you something different. I wanna give you guys an alternative. I'm not trying to pick on the exercise. I'm trying to stress to you that there are better alternatives and I'm actually gonna lay out four reasons why. All right, number one, we know that with the dumbbell fly, I've even broken out the muscle markers to show this, guys. We are in a vulnerable position here on, the, uh, on this exercise just by virtue of doing it on a bench. Now I've talked about why I prefer the floor fly to its safety with the shoulder without detrimental effects to the exercise because of this supported or unsupported status here at the bottom position of this, of this fly. If I'm on the floor, I have a floor to support me. If I'm on a bench, I have nothing to support me. There's no, there's no protection against this overextension here. And even if you've lightened the weights, to account for the fact that you're weaker out here, you can still fail and cause excess stress to the front of the shoulder here, namely the anterior shoulder capsule, which is something we don't wanna mess with. So that's point number one. Point number two, because of this, because of this fact here, we know that the weight in a bench press becomes heavier here, feels heavier in a fly, whether there's a slight bend or whether there's a straight arm here, it, by virtue of the fact that the moment arm has increased. Okay, the effect on the muscle here, which is the pec, becomes heavier because the pec is less able to act, you know, to apply its force as the distance of the dumbbell gets further away from it. So we know that, so it starts to feel heavy and we start to feel, again, weaker out here. So if that's the case, we actually have to decrease the amount of weight we use to accommodate for our weakness in this position out here. I might be able to, to have a lot more weight up here at the top, but I can't use it because I can't support it down here. So that's problem number two. Problem number three is at the top, right? At the very top of this exercise, we're actually here applying very little, if no force at all, to the pec. I can sit here forever, but this is where we want the most because it's when the pec is, is in its peak contracted state or close to it because we want to get to full adduction, even across midline if possible. So that's a strike against it. So three really very real strikes against this exercise. Lastly, I've broken out the muscle marker to show you one other thing. We talked about the stretch on the pec. Like I said, I like to do this exercise because of the stretch I feel on it. When we know that, there are better alternatives for that e e as well. You can go to a bottom portion of a dip and get a better stretch on the pec than you can here in this exercise. But what we're really feeling is you're confusing it for a stretch on a different muscle. Because we know if we get to the bottom here of a bench press, like this, okay, we can see the pec is noted here by the purple uh, muscle marker markings here on the sternum and then out here on the upper humerus, right? You could feel that attachment. You could actually trace the pec with your fingers right into where it attaches. And we know that from this position here, if I were to increase the, the length of that moment arm by just opening up my elbows, the distance there, the amount of extra stretch on the chest is almost absent, if anything, extremely minimal. Even if I brought my arm down a little bit, it's very, very minimal. What I'm feeling is extra cartilage stretch in the rib cage, and also I feel the stretch of my arm, but that's due to a different muscle. That's due to something called the coracobrachialis. That muscle actually starts in here on the coracoid process, deep inside the shoulder, okay, and it runs outside further down on that same humerus. You can actually see a little piece of it underneath the bicep here. It's inside here, kind of noted it up top here too, just so you have the general position. But you see that when I take my arm from this position in here at the bottom of a bench, and then I open it up, what increases in length is the distance between those two points. Not by a lot, but by enough to feel the stretch palpably in that muscle. So for again, for those that are arguing, oh, I feel all that extra stretch there, it's not really what you're feeling. So what's the better alternative? I told you I wouldn't leave you hanging. I've gone to this exercise plenty of times here, guys, because there's a reason for it. It's a better alternative. Now remember, the fly isn't, isn't locked into being performed on a bench like that with your arms out to your side. The fly is basically taking your arm through horizontal adduction, realizing that that's the primary function of the chest. And if we could actually get it across midline at peak contraction, we'd be doing good. So we can do that here with a cable. And if you don't have a cable, you anchor a band to anything and do the same exact thing. So now, what, look at the difference here. When I start in this position here, what do I have? I have the least amount of force on the chest, actually almost zero, because the line of force is parallel now to my humerus, 
what I basically have is the least amount of force being applied in the weakest position of this exercise. That's good, because now I'm not a slave to the lighter weights, because I can actually use the heavier weight that I can actually lift and command in this top position. So now I have peak force uh, applied here to the pec because of the varying line of res resistance here of the cable, and it's in this peak contracted state. So now the pecs are doing a lot more work, and I can use a heavier weight here. I don't have to go light to account for the fact that I can't hold that weight out there safely. I can use a heavier weight so that when I get up to the top here, I'm able to use that, you know, utilize that to my advantage. Okay, and at the same time here, I'm not concerned about the extra stretch for the same reason that I talked about when, when we're laying down on the bench. But what we've done is we've created an alternative to the fly, which is what? An adduction exercise. That's what it is. And it doesn't get subject to even the fifth thing that I didn't even talk about before. And that is we said that even when you get to the top of a fly, there's no resisted adduction up here. It's, it's actually absent because the weights are now moving this way, but gravity is acting down. We can do more than that with this. We can continue to resist, 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 resist across midline a much more uh, uh, significant impact on the chest itself when you're training it. So guys, I'm not trying to pick on it, but it's time to bury the unsupported bench chest fly. A lot of guys want to do it. Do the motion, it's critical. You need adduction. You've heard me say that a million times. The chest fly will give you adduction, but in an inferior way. Do it with a cable or a band, and I promise you guys, you get better results, all right? If you're looking for programs that put the science into what we do, we choose exercises based on those that are backed by science, not just random, hey, this is what everybody else in the gym does. We choose the right ones based on science. They're all built into our programs, all available over at FNX.com. If you found the video helpful, make sure you leave your comments and thumbs up below. And if you haven't already done so, guys, make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss a new video when we put one out. All right, guys, see you soon.